Okay, a uh, short little video about Moodle, what it is and how to use it, just the absolute basics. So what I did first of all, of course, was log in. Uh, everything happens once you've logged in. And in fact, most courses are hidden from anyone, uh, from guests, from anyone, uh, unless you've actually logged in. Our students, when they log in, can see only uh, their own work. If you do use Moodle for a course or for assignment submission, uh, it can be used in all kinds of different ways. Uh, it was originally intended from a pedagogical standpoint to be used in a social constructivist uh, kind of environment. Um, but at the high school level, probably makes more sense to use it, first of all, as a, a repository for notes, uh, for uh, outlines, for, for, you know, for, for any digital type of file. Uh, the next step up from that would be to use it for uh, file submission or for assignment submission. And then beyond that, of course, it can be used for things like lessons, which you can see there is a lesson, computer lab lesson. Uh, can also even be used for quizzes. And uh, at that point, it's got a, a full built-in gradebook. And this is one of the things that makes Moodle so powerful. Uh, you could just use WordPress, for example, but WordPress doesn't give you the ability to easily create uh, quizzes, lessons, store grades, etc. So I thought what I would do um, in this uh, in this short little presentation is show the absolute basics. In other words, how do you actually uh, uh, put a file into Moodle? And so I'll do that right now. So let's. The first thing you do once you've logged in is go to your course, and your courses would show up under My Sites, and I'm in uh, Grade Eight Computer Orientation. So once I've selected that, I'm going to turn the editing on. Click that one time and wait patiently. And once it loads, you'll see that you've got a whole other kind of menu over in the right hand column here. And we could, for example, add new activities over here. OK, and so we can uh, the activities involve interaction typically. So, for example, an assignment where something would actually be submitted uh, chat, which is obvious where students uh, and teachers can communicate with each other in a chat type uh, environment. A uh, choice would be uh, the ability to do like a single question survey. Um, and it does display results as well too, which is handy. Uh, database, have no idea. External tool, don't know. Feedback, uh, that would be like a survey. Uh, forum would be um, a lot actually like chat, except for that it's a permanent type thing. You've seen those online before, I'm sure. Glossary is kind of neat. Uh, glossary is a way to uh, put terms, any number of terms, into a page and uh, basically a glossary for your course. So for example in geology I could you know, list it to different types of, uh, of rocks or all the terms that are associated with, uh, with the course. Hot Potatoes quizzes are matching type quizzes, uh, kind of a neat thing and maybe I'll do a demo of that in the next, uh, the next class or the next, uh, next little lecture. Lessons are exactly that. It's a way for a teacher to present information uh, along multiple slides. So think of it like PowerPoint, except for that at the end of each slide, you can have a question which students uh, would then answer. And they're, they are only allowed to proceed to the next slide, uh, or web page in this case, once they've passed the question. Quiz, of course, is exactly what it sounds like. You can do all kinds of things with quizzes. You can have uh, multiple choice. You can have short answer. You can have essay type. You can have matching. And there's several other types you can do as well, too. OK, so uh, next is real-time quiz. And what you can do with this that's really neat is use like an e-responder, uh, like what we have uh, in the science department. And what students can do using a web-based app, so they could actually use their phones and a web app, you could put questions up on the board, and they can answer them in real time. Uh, it can be used for two things. It could be used for a real-time quiz, like an actual test. Uh, practice type test as well too, so summative or formative, doesn't matter. Uh, but it can also be used during a lecture to see if students are understanding the material that's being presented. And uh, uh, the results are immediate, they're put up on the board or they can be included if you want to. SCORM I've never used, uh, surveys, actually, surveys not quite what it sounds like, uh, I'll leave that one for now. Uh, a wiki is exactly that, and a wiki can be built by the students. And um, you know, it's, you could actually put like glossary of terms and have the students build that themselves, for example. Uh, lots of different uses for wikis. Basically, they build the pages. And workshop, uh, I'm not sure what that is either. I've never used it before. References book is really quite neat. It basically allows you to create a book. And uh, again, any number of pages, the difference between that and a lesson is that there's no questions associated with books. It's just uh, multiple pages, which all do interlink or can be made to interlink. File, that's it. It's just a file resource, so you can upload a file. Uh, folder allows you to upload an entire folder of files. I uh, haven't used this one before. 
Labels, let me just, uh, I'll show you that in a second. Lightbox Gallery is a bunch of photos that you put together. Page, think of that as just a web page. I often use, put notes, for example, uh, on a given topic. I'll put them all into a page. And URL is an external link if you want to link to a website. So let's just quickly take a look at label. I said I'd come back to that one. And I'm going to cancel for now. So a label would be like this right here. That's a label. Anything where you simply have text, okay, how to complete this course, that's a label. A little bit of a long label, but it is a, a label. And at the start of every single, uh, every single chapter inside of your Moodle course, you have the ability to have a label. And you can simply click on the little gear here, and you could go in and change that if you wanted to. I'm just going to cancel it, but you could add more information as well, too. And you can insert labels uh, inside the middle of any of your the different units or however you break up your course. Okay, so let's say we want to add a file. All we have to do is open up our finder, find a file that we want to upload. I'll take uh, Clipart Study, and we simply drag it in. That's all we do. Drag it in uh, if you're in edit mode. So once editing is on, and what do you want to what do you want to do with the Clipart Study JPEG? Add image to course page or create a file resource. We're going to try both. I'll do create a, actually let's add image to course page first. We'll click upload and let's see what happens. We just wait patiently while it uploads and there it is. And so what it did was it in effect kind of made a label out of this and it actually allowed us to put an image right into that section inside of our course. So I'm going to delete that now. I'll click on edit and delete. Goodbye, little study guy. And what I'm going to do is drag the same file in again. Okay, if I can get it to load here. Where did it go? There it is. I'm going to drag it in once again, but this time I'm going to make it a file resource. So I'll minimize this. Create file resource. Click upload. And then what we'll do is we'll see that it actually creates a link to that uh, image. And we could do the exact same thing with a document or with a PDF. Uh, or any kind of file, any, anything that can be stored digitally, we simply drag it in and there it is. And it creates uh, a, a resource, a linkable resource now, and if you click on it, the image shows up. It's almost like it made a, a page, especially for that, uh, that, uh, that picture. And in fact, you could also put recordings in here. So for example, you could record a short lecture uh, and you could drag the MP3 file and it would simply appear inside of your, uh, your web page. Um, with pictures, they're kind of the exception in that that, uh, that little pop-up which asks you if you want to embed it or if you want to create a file resource. That's, that won't always show up. It'll only show up for compatible type files that could actually be displayed. For example, a, a JPEG, an image type, would be a good example. Okay, that's probably enough for now. Uh, I think what I'll do is, um, is maybe take a few notes and make another slightly more advanced uh, how-to page for Moodle. Oh, I should mention one more thing actually. I have heard people say over time that you know they just don't like the look of Moodle. They think that it looks old, and that's perfectly fine. Uh, Moodle does have kind of a, a, a classic web appearance, I guess would be one way to put it. Um, but just remember that this is just window dressing. In fact, um, here I, I, I found a couple online that I thought were pretty good. Uh, this, this is one style here, and again, this is just a theme that can be applied to Moodle. And it's as easy as purchasing the theme and simply installing it. You can have uh, uh, links. Uh, I actually set one up as well too. So this is set up on, on uh, an external hosting site and um, I installed Moodle. I went and found a free theme that actually I thought didn't look too bad and um, it's bootstrap based for those who are into this sort of thing. And what it allows us to do of course is go ahead and completely customize it. So that part of things hopefully we'll, we'll see a bit of a facelift to Moodle coming uh, this September. So that, that is the plan. Uh, and that is all for now.